Hello there. We're back again. This is Soul Language. And then I'm Miss Peg Smith. This is uh, Cheryl Pompquist. And you know her by now as the author of the Miracle Story 2014. Uh, she's been with me since the show number one. Absolutely, uh, a miracle in itself that <laughs> when right. God put us together, someday we we're going to tell you That's that right. we're going to tell you that whole story yeah. uh, about how Cheryl and I met and right. uh, re- and uh, bring that up again. Yes. Uh, okay. Today, Cheryl, um, I want to start out uh, with um, actually. Let's start out with prayer. Okay. Do you want to say a prayer to open us with today? Absolutely. All right. Father, we come to you today. We thank you for the privilege once again to come together with your people, with all the viewers today who are watching Soul Language. Pray that you would prepare all of our hearts, that we might hear your word, that you would direct our steps and our words, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And anyone out there today uh, that has not been with us with one of our uh, our past shows, uh, the previous shows, uh, you know, are going to be exciting. Uh, I mean, this one's going to be exciting, yes. and the ones in the future are going to be exciting uh, because we have a vision from God. We left off with that last week, uh, the last show yes. uh, of the of the vision for 2016 right. in America, making God great again in America. That's right. And uh, this nation is is still a great nation, no matter what. And That's God right. is a great God, no matter right. what. But we right. need to bring Him back into this country, this nation, right. where it was founded on Him. Right. And we need to do that. And so God has called Cheryl and I to be a big part of that. Amen. We're just a little soldier, as we said last week, right. uh, in this army that He's putting together. Right. But I want to start the show off today because we are, the simplicity of the gospel is what soul language means. And mm-hmm. if you saw our shows early on, uh, the where, where the name of this show came about was from God because Mm -hmm. God told us what to name the show. We were praying for it and God told us, but also it, it originated from DL Moody. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's one of my favorites. And uh, Cheryl even bought me his, his book that I I love. I love that book. book. And it tells about DL Moody way back when he Mm -hmm. started out uh, on the streets in America way back in the 1800s. And, and if you took Chicago right now, Cheryl, Mm-hmm. And you put you put that uh, take Chicago right now and put it out put it back in the 1800s. Mm-hmm. That that's what he was doing. He was yes. on the streets. He went into uh, the ghettos and mm-hmm. grabbed up the children and led them to Jesus. And you know, I feel in my heart right now there are so many cities, and we're going to be going mm-hmm. into a lot of cities with the gospel right. uh, in 2016. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that if those children that right now have such a struggle. Mm-hmm. And there's 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 shooting and killing and yes. and gang members and you you, you just name it and drugs uh, in America, but on those streets, if we took even a fraction of the money that we spend to fix these problems mm-hmm. that seem not to ever do anything, um, if we if we could just get there and tell them about Jesus, that's right. That's all we need to do, like D.L. Moody did. Mm-hmm. He went in there, and those children all followed Jesus, and they followed him. And uh, and and uh, he was an uneducated yes. man. Yes. And uh, but 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 he was known as as a as a man of soul language. And he was available. And he was available. Mm-hmm. But they pegged him as just those dynamic uh, sermons and things that he right. did. He was just. Uh, uh, identified that's right. as just having soul language, yes. and that's what I feel like I have. I'm a, a very uneducated, and I and I know that God has called me to do a job. Uh, sometimes I think about Peter when he told him to come and follow him. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that's how I feel. You know, God just says, "Come follow me, Miss Peg." Uh, I don't care whether you got any education or not, but you got soul language. That's right. And so that's where the, the name of the show came about was uh, God laying that on my heart when I was praying and. And uh, also, um, uh, you know, I, I, th- I think about uh, that story of Peter and, and how, you know, h- how he just up and left. He was, he was willing and available mm-hmm. to go because, I mean, what if you had, uh, if you could picture that today, right. what if you just had uh, a booming business? Right. Okay. And, right. and Jesus comes to you and says, look, walk away from all that. I want yeah. you to go with me because I have a job for you to do. Right. Much more productive for the kingdom than mm-hmm. that, you know, and right. I'll show you what to do. Right. Uh, what, what, what would people do? I mean, 
Are there very many out there in America that would leave your job today if God called you to? And to leave everything that you have worked for for years and years and years, and all of a sudden, just like Philip, when Philip was was out there preaching right. the gospel, having revival, and then all of a sudden God said, I got one lonely old man out there, that eunuch yes. out there, I want you to go, and he just yes. went. Yes. And uh, so that's how I feel, that the people in America in 2016, <laughs> God's people, that's what they're going to have to do. They're going mm-hmm. to have to be willing to walk and give a little time yes. to uh, uh, getting out there and leading people to Jesus and get out of their comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily walk away from your business, but that right. was that's just a a picture of that's right. getting out of your comfort zone. That's right. Uh, you know, yeah. you you can sit in your churches from Sunday to Sunday, and uh, and right. you can talk about. You know, well, I've already been there and done that years ago, so yeah. let, let the young do it. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. There's still a place out there for you. That's right. There's still a place out there for you to get out there. Even, you know, we, we have this cube. Mm-hmm. There is a pin, a writing pin, that has this cube. You pull it out, and this, this oh. story, it, just like this cube, is on oh, that wow. pin. And men can wear it in their pocket. Mm. And you can be out there and you can take this pen out of your pocket and you can just open it like this and put it out like this and there's the gospel. Just like this cube. Tremendous. And so, so many businessmen that we met up with years ago, uh, they they did not want to carry this around, but they would put that Mm -hmm. pen and in the elevators and wherever they would go, Mm -hmm. they'd pull that pen out and lead somebody to Jesus. It's amazing. Tremendous. And uh, so... You know, that's uh, just to start our show today, I just want to share a story that I shared with uh, Cheryl this morning. Uh, I met up with a young man this morning by the name of Connor, and uh, uh, he just he just had a a uh, heart that was prepared by God. Um, I started visiting with him and uh, and he wanted to just talk just a little bit. And Mm -hmm. he was wanting to share with me about his his new uh, fiance. Mm-hmm. He, he was engaged to be married, uh, which is going to be in May of 2016. Beautiful. So we just we just talked about his life a little mm-hmm. bit. You could tell he really wanted to mm-hmm. share all of this with someone. And as we were doing that, I remembered I had a cube. And I just said, you know, I have something I want to give you for a wedding gift right now. I just met you today, mm-hmm. and I want to give you this. And I said, you know... Uh, and he said, well, you know, more or less, he looked over there like you're really curious about what in the world this was. I said, right. well, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ that you find in your Bible mm-hmm. uh, about the Lord, how he died and rose again and ascended into heaven and paid your debt at the cross. And right. his, his innocent blood washed away all your sins. And I just shared that with him. Mm-hmm. And I went through this. I said, you know, how in the world do you think man in sin, Connor? It's going to get over here in heaven with God. How in the world when you can't work your way there because Mm -hmm. you're a sinner. Right. And you're not going to ever be good enough to get there. So it took something to get you there. And I said, it took God and his mercy and his grace and his love for you, Connor. Mm -hmm. And he sent his only son to die for you on a cross. And he had innocent blood. He had no sin. And I said, and he washed away your sins at the cross. Mm-hmm. And I said, and let's see if God always does what he says he's going to do. I said, look at this. I said, there's Jesus Christ. He did die. And Connor, right, right up here on this cross at the top, that should have been your name and yes. my name. Yes. That should have been our name up there, mm-hmm. Connor. But he said he would pay our debt and, and he would <laughs> die for us. Can you imagine uh, with all your sin, with all my sin, Jesus said, I'll die for them mm-hmm. so that they can then spend eternity in heaven with my father. And, and I, I, I continued to show him the cube. And I told him, I said, you know, you can't be good enough to get to heaven. So uh, Jesus Christ paid your debt, but you have to believe that by faith. That's right. To, to come to Christ, it <clears throat> has to be by faith. It can't be by anything else. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one's going to go to the Father but by him. And I said, and you know he died, and they put him in a tomb, Connor? And he said before he went to the cross that he was going to die and be buried in a tomb, and third day he was going to raise again. Mm -hmm. I said, look at this, Connor. I said, he rose again, and he's God. I said, you know, if he didn't rise again, he was a phony. 
And I said, but he rose again and he sits at the right hand of the Mm -hmm. father waiting for us. Absolutely. And and I and I told him I said you know, uh, if if he hadn't have, hadn't have done this, if he couldn't save himself, how could he save you, Connor Army? Right. If he couldn't save himself, and I told him I said you know, uh, uh, all you have to do is to believe that by faith, mm-hmm. and you can be saved. And <clears throat> and let's look at this. This is when Jesus paid that price for you. That's right. He made a bridge. <clears throat> That cross made a bridge for you to walk right across from darkness into light. And so Connor was just like, wow, you know. And so I said, look at this. I said, Connor, you don't have to spend eternity in hell. No. You can live over here for eternity with Jesus Christ. And I said, you know what, Connor? The worst (laughs) thing about hell is not the flames of fire. That's bad enough. That's right. But the real thing about being over here and not over here for mm-hmm. eternity is the absence of God. Yes. You will never be with God again. Separated forever. No, you're separated right. forever. And oh, he was just like shedding tears by that time. And I said, you know, if you would accept Jesus Christ this morning as your Savior, he'll wash away all those old sins. And I said, you'll right. even take a deep breath because you'll be freed up. That's right. And I said, you'll go, just like that whenever you accept Jesus into your life and no one will be able to pluck you out of his hand once you do that. And not only that, Connor, you know the religions out there because I know the background where you said you came from. Mm-hmm. The, the, they're, they're out there telling you you won't know whether you're getting into heaven or not until right. you stand before Jesus yeah. at judgment. I said, no, 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 no. I said, you want assurance of salvation right now. You can't wait till you get there because if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, you're not getting in. That's right. You're going to end up over here. You won't get in here. That's right. And so I said, and let me share something else with you. If you would say that prayer this morning and ask Jesus into your life, he'll come in. He'll come in and save you. And then when you die, because we all will, Connor, right. he's a young man. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, when you die, you'll get to go to heaven. And you don't have to wait until they're wondering, well, I wonder if I've been good enough today. I wonder if I, well, wait a minute. Maybe this sin wasn't bad enough that yeah. would keep me out, but this one might have yeah. been. And I said, no, you won't get in mm-hmm. there with original sin. No. That's got to be taken away right. some way, Connor. Right. I said, from Adam and Eve. And he said, oh, yeah, I remember. So he knew that story if he didn't know anything else. <laughs> but anyway, he got saved this morning. He gave his life to Christ. And he weighed about 200 pounds, I think. He was a big old boy. And the minute that he accepted Jesus into mm-hmm. his life, he grabbed me and put his arms around me and held on to me and would not let me go. Mm-hmm. And I just kept saying, praise the Lord, yeah. praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you for Connor. He's given That's his right. life to you today. And the angels are rejoicing That's in right. heaven. And they're having a party. And your name, Connor, just yes. went into the book Lamb's of Book of Life, That's which right. is the Jesus' book. That's what I say. Right. It's Jesus' book. And when you stand there that day to be judged, yes. you won't be judged because he'll look into that book and he'll say, on February in February 2016, yes. you gave your life to That's me. Right. And so you just go right on in. You're one of mine. Absolutely. You're one of Beautiful. mine. Beautiful. And so he knows today. And he left rejoicing yes. with his cube in his hand. Yes. And uh, he wants to show it to his fiance. So Wonderful. that she can go to heaven with him. And it was a it yes. was an awesome, awesome, marvelous yes. morning. Yes. And uh was so full of joy and and you know, and one of the things, uh, Cheryl, I know you have some things to share uh about our going out in twenty sixteen mm-hmm. and <clears throat> and how you and your husband re- actually want to be on the streets with us yes. and and uh so I I want you to do that in just a moment. But I, I wanted to share this with, with the viewers. You know, when Connor got saved this morning which you can do right now. Mm -hmm. You heard that prayer and you saw what Jesus Christ did for you. And if you're out there in your living room right now or or wherever you may be watching this show and and you just say, you know what? That's what's been wrong in my life. I've never given my life to Christ. No wonder I'm having so many problems in my life because, you know, Jesus Christ will come in. The Holy Spirit will live in your heart and, and your life is changed. Do you want to change life out there today? If you do, then give your life to Christ this morning. And here is the deal. You don't have to wait 
until you no. stand in front of the judge no. to find out whether you're going in no. or not and uh -uh. to live wondering right. all the rest of your life. No, because I'll tell you, in, I wanted to read this scripture this morning. In 1 John 5, 13, it says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Yes. You may know it. That you have eternal Absolutely. life. Yeah. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. That's right. You can continue to believe in me. You've got assurance you're going in. Yes. And now, what in the world? There's nothing else. No. Once you have that, there's nothing else. And without that, when these troubles come, and these diseases come mm -hmm. where you've got a six months to live or this or that or right. a broken marriage or, or uh, whatever the right. problem may be. Right. This Jesus, the yeah. only Jesus, That's right. can change your life. Absolutely. You will be changed forever <clears throat> with the Son of God that came to die in your place. Changed forever. And... Um, I want to end with this, and I want you to mm -hmm. pick up and do the rest of this time okay. we have. The wrath of God and the judgment of God fell on him on the cross. The wrath of God fell and the judgment of God fell on Jesus Christ, not you and I. That's so that right. he could be the right. one that That's paid right. for it all. He didn't die as a martyr. No. He didn't die as a victim. Mm-mm. No. He died as a substitute. As a sacrifice. In my yes. place. That's right. A substitute in yes. my place. Yes. He did it for me. And he'll do it for you. That's right. That's right. And I just wanted to leave you with this. When he pulled himself up on mm -hmm. the nails mm -hmm. and he stood up on the spikes mm -hmm. and he shouted, it is finished. Yes. He paid it in full. That's right. There's nothing else. You can't add to the cross. No. He did it all. That's right. And I've done for you what you could not do for yourself. That's right. That's there right. it is, folks. That's right. He did for you what you couldn't do for yourself. Absolutely. Now you need to accept that by, That's right. by faith, and it's a free gift from God. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. And folks, what else do you have? Mm hmm who else? Yeah. What else can offer you <clears throat> life right. eternal? That's right. I just want you to know that today there are millions in this nation in 2016 mm -hmm. that God has said he is going to bring them back That's to right. him. That's he's right. going to save them. He's right. going to bring the, his children that have strayed. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring them back. That's right. And I want you to know, Cheryl, 2016 is a year for everyone to watch. It is. To what God is going to do yes. as we make him great again yes. in America. In America. Absolutely. So I know that you have something Absolutely. to end the show with and yes. to share with them. Absolutely. So you do that, okay? That transformational change that Miss Peg talked about, when you pray that prayer and ask Jesus to come into your heart, to take you from darkness to light, from emptiness to love forever, that change happens in a moment. The moment that you call upon his name, he says, I will be your savior. I will, I will forgive you. He, is already, he already died for you. His sacrificial death was a gift. No one took his life. Amen. He gave his life. Amen. The greatest sacrifice ever. And for you, that's available today. That gift is available. What Miss Peg was talking about, if you don't know Jesus, or as she asked Connor, if, if you were to go out and drive and in, get in a car accident today and lose your life, would you know for sure that you will be in heaven forever? And he said, no, but I want to know, but I'm not sure. Ask yourself that question right now. Do you know if, you're, if this breath that you take is the last breath that you ever take on earth? Where will you be? Where will you go? Will you be the one hoping, I hope I was good enough that maybe they'll let me into heaven? Hope doesn't do it. It's faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Surrendering your life to him, saying, I can't live life on my own because none of us can. We can't get through a day without the Lord. That's right. And 
perhaps you're the one who is saying, I really, I really like that boldness. I like the boldness that Miss Peg, I love the story. I relate to that story of wanting to tell someone about Jesus. There's a Connor in my neighborhood. There's a Connor at my supermarket that I see, and That's I don't so think true. he knows Jesus. And then, you're, and then you think, but how could I ever tell him? How could, how could I be bold enough like Miss Peg to take out this cube and say, Jesus died for you. Do you want to go from darkness to light? I want to challenge you with this verse from Romans. These verses from Romans chapter 10, because this speaks to every one of us who are believers. Every one of us who needs to have a cube in our hands when we go to the supermarket. Have it in your purse. Gentlemen, put it in your briefcase. This Starting in verse 13 of Romans 10, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a certainty. If you call on Jesus today, you will be saved. Your name will be written in the book of life forever. And you will spend eternity yes. with Jesus and with our wonderful Heavenly Father. The next verse says, How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? A preacher doesn't mean someone who has a certificate hanging on their wall because they're a graduate of, of a seminary. Or has a big church. Or a big <laughs> church, no. A preacher is anybody who will open the lips that God has given you and with the breath that he gives you as you live each moment, if you will speak and you'll say, do you know Jesus? Do you want to go from darkness to light? Do you want to know for sure where you will spend eternity? If you want to say that to somebody, if, you, if that's deep in your heart and you haven't perhaps even dared to admit that to anyone, then you, my friend, are a preacher. You're a reacher. You reach the lost. So two more verses. Let me share. You get the glasses, sorry. <clears throat> and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace Amen. and bring glad tidings of good things. Yes. Today, Miss Peg, her feet are beautiful because she preached the gospel and Connor knows Jesus. He left with a cube that he's going to share with the fiance that he loves, his future wife that he's going to marry just a few months from now. And you too, my friend, call today, get on the website, the information is on your screen. Ask for a cube. <clears throat> Smith & Smith Ministries wants to send you a cube. Just ask for it. Miss Peg has said on previous programs that she doesn't ask for revenue. She doesn't ask for gifts, which she doesn't. But if this program has touched you and you want to help her put these cubes in other people's hands, you will accept those donations. Of course, we never turn down a donation. <laughs> because you will buy a cube. You'll buy a tool. You'll equip someone to share the gospel. And it's like I told Miss Peg, I have, a, I have a cob of corn at home from my father's farm. He's with Jesus now. But I was looking at that just this week, and I thought, look at all those seeds so perfectly lined up in a row. And we are like the one seed. When Miss Peg took that cube and talked to Connor today, she was one seed. That seed was planted. The message that she shared with Connor, that seed was planted. And that seed can bring forth fruit, more and more fruit. And more lives can be transformed. Should we pray with the viewers today? Yes, Cheryl, but I want to say one thing okay. here. Um, you, know, um, you know, Jesus is coming real That's soon. That's right. Uh, his word tells us that, and uh, the, 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 the question is, we know he's coming, but the question is, are you ready? That's right. Are you ready? That's the whole thing. Are you ready when Jesus comes? Yes. Is he coming for you? Is he coming That's for right. you? Is Jesus coming for you when he comes? Have you given your life to Jesus? That's right. If you have, then you need to be 
living in a in a in a world of joy and happiness right. and peace and with peace. all the turmoil that's going on that's right. in the world that should not bother you mm. uh many times when i tell the people about the seven year tribulation and the antichrist and hell and they say well miss peg uh that's gloom and doom and i said no it's not it is if you're lost going that's to right. hell it's gloom and doom that's right you know but it isn't if you know Jesus, no. because you're waiting for that. That's right. You're waiting for him. And when he comes, <laughs> is he coming for you? That's right. That's what you have to ask yourself. Is he? That's right. And I just want to say this. I, I think right now we will just say a prayer. Uh, you heard us say the prayer early on about, <laughs> about how to be saved. But let's pray, because right now you may want to do that. You may want to pray that prayer. And let's pray that prayer right now together. That's and right. you will know for sure that, like That's Connor right. this morning, that you're on your way to heaven. That's right. Father, I just ask you to come into my heart. Just, just ask the Lord to come into your heart, yes. whoever you are right now. Yes. And Father, come into my heart, my life. Reveal who you are to me. I know I need a Savior. Yes. I, I, I know that my life needs to be changed. I do yes. want to spend eternity in yes. heaven. I do want to be with you forever and ever. But Father, I have never done that because I really didn't understand it. Yes. But today, Lord, I understand that I need to cry out to you and ask you to forgive me for my sins. Make me one of yours, Lord. Yes. Let me be one of your children that until you come, I will be productive for your kingdom. Yes. I will go out and I will lead others to you, Father, yes. so that our country can turn back to you yes, Jesus. and be the nation that it was founded upon, which is you. It was founded upon you. And you blessed this nation. Lord, you blessed this nation. Yes. But we've fallen backwards. We've gone astray. We've gone away from you. Father, we need to come back. Yes. We repent, yes. and you tell us that you will give us our nation back again. Yes. Father, I pray right now, Lord, that you've saved me, you've come into my heart, and you're my Savior. I thank you for everything you've done for me. Yes. Let me go out and be a testimony to others about yes. you. Yes. Lord, I thank you again for saving me. We thank you now. Tune in and come back next week. And we will tell you more about 2016. Yes. God bless you. Amen.